We go to the bottom of the first inning as St. John's comes up here in game three of this weekend set. Let's take a look at the Butler defense today. And for Butler, they'll have Marcos Calderon in center field, Austin Miller in right, Michael Fries is in left, and the same infield that they've had with Seniak, Boney, Morato, and Wojciechowski on the infield, and Will Amador doing the catching. And for St. John's batting order today, Alex Caruso leading it off. His average up over 300. Brent De Dennis getting to start today in DH. That's the one change with Wayman, Harris, Medeiros in the middle. Michael Donadio, the freshman. Zach Lorisella in right field. Rob Knights at third base. And Tyler Sanchez doing the catching. And St. John's will face six foot three junior left-hander Eric Stout from Wheaton, Illinois. He was the lone bulldog to make the preseason all Big East team. He leads Butler in strikeouts with 36, making his ninth start of the season. As he deals here low to Caruso. And his last start, a win against Seton Hall for Stout. Six innings, five earned runs. Six hits, walked four, but Butler able to pull out the series victory against Seton Hall. A big victory for the Bulldogs in the first conference weekend. And Stout in his third season as a weekend starter for Butler. In three different conferences. 2-0 pitch is a strike to Alex Caruso. So he's been through the battles from the Horizon League as a freshman, the A-10 last year as a sophomore, and now the Big East. 2-1 pitches ripped to left center field. Falling fast, that's a base hit in front of Calderon. And Calderon boots it, and Caruso will easily ghost it to second base to lead off the first inning. We'll good, check on the scoring. Good solid hit by Alex Caruso on that outside fastball. Stayed contained with it, drove it into left center. Snuck by the outfield a little bit, but I'm pretty sure he would have had a double no matter what. It will be a double for Caruso. A little bobble right there, but he had had a double. This stout, this young man, Eric Stout, boy, I can see why professional scouts like him. He's nice and smooth, good size. Seems to have some good movement on the fastball, but he gives up a lot of hits. So that tells me that probably he's, he's up in the strike zone a little bit. He's got to be the master of low, like James Lomagino was the other day in Friday night's game against Butler with 10 strikeouts. The master of the low fastball. Here's Brett Dennis, the DH today, and the pitch in the dirt blocked by the catcher, Amador. As Amador walked out to staff to change up the signs. So St. John's 18 hits through the first two games, adding another. And Brett Dennis back in the lineup, making his 13th start of the year. He's at 288. He started off the season red hot, but St. John's was not able to find a consistent option at the DH. So it's his turn today against the lefty as he squares the bunt and takes a call strike. It's one and one. Well, it's been a good option for uh, Coach Blankmeyer in a designated spot. He used Ty Blankmeyer on Friday night. He had a left-hander who was a little slow to the plate. Ty brings good base running ability to the table. Brett Dennis has been a solid hitter. Dennis squaring again, and he takes the pitch low. He laid off of it, and he's ahead of the count, 2-1. Brett, a junior from Burnt Hills, New York. The back half of his freshman year was excellent. He was initially slated to Wrencher, but St. John's had a need, and he participated on a team and started and went all the way to the Super Regionals. 2-1 fastball laying off of it is Dennis. He's ahead 3-1 against Eric Stout. And in talking to his coach, Steve Farley, about Eric, he is getting a lot of attention from scouts because he can reach 90 in the early innings. As a left-hander that goes 6'3", we'll see his slider today, too. As the 3-1 pitch in there for a call strike, that was the slider. And the count full as Dennis thought he had ball four. Wow, I thought that. I thought that was pretty low, to tell you the truth. You know, we had, we've had some umpire in here who was uh, calling a lot of low strikes the last two days. They switch each day. This is Tippy Wabesh, the home plate umpire today. Payoff pitch is Dennis, able to foul it back. And still with Alex Caruso with great speed of born on at seconds. And Dennis in a good battle here with Stout. And Steve Farley didn't mince any words. He says, we need a strong start today from Eric. The starting pitching has been one of the strengths for Butler, but they have been scoring enough to help him. And the 3-2 is on the ground to short. 
up with it. Caponi across to hold Caruso on at second, and there's one away. Well, he failed to move him along. They tried to bunt, but it was a couple of pitches that were balls. Which might be trying to have an early lead. Uh, yeah. I'm recording. Robert Wayman going to step up. Got a good RBI man for St. John's. Steady second baseman. Also plays third occasion. Wayman, at times for St. John's, has been their best hitter. Two for five yesterday with a run scored for the series, but two for eight. Matt Stout spins around and pays close attention to Caruso. And number one of the St. John's Junior transfers, but he is fitted super quickly. Made the adjustment out of Salinas, California. And this pitch ripped to second, caught by the second baseman, Maranto. Caruso able to read it and get back to second. Good base running by Alex Caruso. He read it off the head of the bat. He saw it wasn't hit that hard. It's a good read there. He freezes. You can see that. And he knows right away. Back to the bat. Good base running by Alex Caruso right there. Buddy RBI is up to number 44, first baseman Matt Harris, another junior JC transfer. There are seven of them on this St. John's team, and they've all been needed for Ed Blackmire to produce instantly, and Harris has been able to do that. Harris's number is up to 294 this season. He has started all but one game of the year with a couple of home runs. Team leader at 24 RBI. And a good day yesterday after an 0 for 4 Friday night as he Sees another curveball bending from a strike from Eric Stout. Had a nice hit yesterday in center field with a key RBI in that ball game. Made a great defensive play Friday Friday night. In a save on a comebacker for two out and two runners on in a tight ball game, three one St. John's. And pitcher bounced the ball to first base and he made a, a great scoop. Close down the game. One two pitch fouled back there by Harris. And St. John's defense has been one of their strengths. As opposed to the Butler Bulldogs today, that they rely so much on pitching and defense, and Steve Farley makes that be the priority of the program. That is the Bulldogs' identity. They have not defended as well as he would have liked. This one, oh, it kind of took a funny hop, and it goes into left field, a base hit. Caruso makes the turn and he'll score. Somehow that ball changed directions and I don't think it hit the bag either. It's 1-0 St. John's. That was a six ball in the side pocket with a lot of English right off the end of the bat. It fooled the third baseman, who's a very good defensive player. And you can see it right off the end of the bat. English and it sort of fools him and spins backwards. So six ball in the side pocket. There we go. Wow. A shot maybe the Black Widow would be proud of, Bobby. <laughs> Here's Jared Baderos, the reigning Big East player of the week. And a curveball breaks in for a strike. Here to Stout. I think if you tried 1,000 swings, Bob, even if each row tried 1,000 swings, I don't think you can do that again. That was a tough one to read. Wow. Stout with the slider that Madero swings over the top over and misses. It's a two strikeout. And Madero has found his groove as a Johnny, a junior from Hialeah, Florida, that started out his career at Miami. Hit around the Mendoza line, had to transfer to Santa Fe College at the junior college levels. A chopper to third, and it's fielded foul by Mike Siniak. And it's still a two strikeout. What's been the difference that you've noticed about Madero's? Medeiros is solid defensively. Yesterday there were four double plays. Pitcher's best friend to quell uh, some Butler rallies in that ball game. Plus, offensively, he's been a consistent threat through the entire season so far. But he's the key ingredient for St. John's success this year as opposed to last year. There goes Harris. The 0-2 pitch outside a ball thrown at the second is not in time. Stout nearly had his head taken off the pitcher because his catcher, Amador, threw down. And Stout basically had to duck out of the way. As if he was trying to dodge a cannonball. Good reactions by Eric right there. He almost had to eat that one. That was 
Good jump by Harris, left on lift. See that? He just went on left at first base. Stout's about one three five one four to, to the plate, which is adequate. And Medeiros puts her on the ground to seconds. Chris Moranto closes out the inning, but St. John's gets a run on two hits and a cue ball down the left field line from Matt Harris. It's one nothing St. John's as we go to the seconds. <laughs> 